Cyberpunk 2077 is one of the best looking games out there. It's truly amazing how beautiful a futuristic corporate dystopia can look like, though that doesn't mean that it can't look even better. And recently a mod was brought to my attention that promises to do just that, providing much more higher quality textures for some of the most common things found in the game. And the cherry on top is that the author promises that there is no hit to performance at all. So does it actually do what it says on tin? Well, when I actually installed a mod, I had a pretty hard time deducting if it's even working. In Urban Light City, the difference was pretty hard to spot at first, with some of the most common textures seeing pretty much no difference, though a lot of those textures look just fine, so whatever. But some of the other textures that very clearly needed a rework don't appear to be touched at all. Now the mod is still in its infancy, so things like this will probably be added over time, but still kind of disappointing to see how little difference I actually noticed in the more urban environments of Central Night City. Though when it comes to stuff like graffiti, the difference is night and day, with it alongside other decals appearing much sharper and higher resolution. Then moving from downtown into the wastelands beyond Night City, the differences start to become much clearer. Textures for stuff like worn down roads are noticeably improved, going from looking like some early last gen games to something truly next gen. And stuff like dirt especially is just in a whole other league. It looks so good. I mean no hyperbole when I say that this is probably the best looking dirt I've ever seen in the game. Yeah, put that quote on your Nexus mod page. So that's all well and good, but all my years of being cynically jaded have taught me that nothing comes without a price. So there has to be some hit to performance or something, right? While the author says that this mod will consume about 800 megabytes of your graphics card's VRAM, so as long as you have that much spare, things should be fine. And even if you do go slightly overboard, there shouldn't be too much of a hit to performance. However, if you do happen to have a particularly tight frame buffer budget, then there is a lighter version of this mod available that will only take up around 400 megabytes instead. So was the guy telling the truth? Does it actually not have any impact? Well, surprisingly, yes. In our testing, we had the exact same results for both vanilla gameplay alongside the two different flavors of this mod, making this probably the easiest graph I've ever made. But this was done on a graphics card with 11 gigabytes of VRAM, so if you do happen to have a GPU with less memory, then issues may start to arise. So far I've been actually pretty impressed, and as far as my cynical side would love to find things to complain about, I really can't. So if you do want to give it a go, then the link to it is going to be down in the video description below. And if you do already have it and use it, then let me know your thoughts down in the comments. And while you're still here, maybe check out our Patreon, because even a single dollar a month truly really goes a long way, while you get awesome perks as well. I'd also love to thank my existing patrons, Gavin Burns, Ryan, Oki B, Justin Rage, Ella Vronyak, Belosh Roker, Max Sumner, Shane Ulcroft, Lance V, Jesse Hubman, and Shannon Odgun. Down is you can find our merch store, our Discord server, and our social media links as well. But anyway, that's what it's, so I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then remember to subscribe, like, whatever, and I'll see you all whenever I make next. Goodbye, everyone. Good. Bye.